So, so much for the introduction, the past, the present, the future. Now for the clinical topic, and I'm a clinician only, really. And I'm going to come back to the title, which is um, Tuesday. And using, as I did in the earlier talk, doctor's letters. So every Tuesday morning at St. Thomas's, we used to have a general lupus clinic, and it was mostly lupus, but now it's mostly antiphospholipid, and the numbers are just increasing weekly as cardiologists and others are recognizing the importance of the disease. So, ten quick cases. First is diagnosis, doctor's letter number one. Dear Dr. Hughes, Mrs. Smith, although I suspect antiphospholipid syndrome, She's never had a thrombosis or a miscarriage. Could she have the syndrome? Well, the answer is, of course, yes, very definitely. And I'm sure you in psychiatry will be seeing more and more of these patients. It's not just overt thrombosis or miscarriage. So here's case number one, pain in the foot. This is a man aged 41, diagnosed antiphospholipid syndrome, and he complained of pain in the left foot. No history of trauma. On x-ray, a metatarsal fracture. And a very bright young registrar, Shiri Sangal, who was in our department, collected in a short period of time 29 cases, spontaneous metatarsal fractures. Now, what's that got to do with sticky blood? We don't know, but now there are many case reports of uh, rib fractures, spontaneous spinal cord fractures, spinal fractures, and other bone fractures. Presumably, because the bone becomes ischemic in places, just like any other organ. What's the lesson from this patient? That the orthopedic surgeons, I think, are seeing this syndrome, as well as metatarsal fractures and other fractures. Uh, we, we see many more now than we used to think about. I saw a lady not so long ago, an American woman, and I just happened to ask her if she ever had a fracture. Oh, yes, I've had eight metatarsal fractures, and she was a jogger. And um, th this seemed to be a, a, a weakness in some of these patients. It's quite interesting, too, because another feature of the syndrome is hip pain. And this shows bilateral avascular necrosis. You can see the head of femur on both sides looking soft, mushy, ischemic. And the hip, of course, is an end organ. So ischemia there is devastating. You get a hip collapse, hip replacement required. And we now know that this is a feature in some patients, uh, avascular necrosis, especially in lupus with APS if they've had steroids as well. And in, even more interestingly, this is, this is a man, older man, 57, no treatment, but he was antiphospholipid, getting frequent migraines, increasing hip pain bilaterally. He tried on aspirin, it didn't seem to do anything, and then we did a trial of heparin, which I mentioned earlier and I'll mention again. Headaches disappeared, but interestingly, his hip pain completely disappeared. His x-rays of the hip showed nothing much, but MRI showed definite early avascular necrosis. It won you wonder, therefore, whether you might catch some of these patients with early AVN, if they're APL positive, with some form of, AVAS, of uh, improving circulation to that end organ. There have been a few cases of alga dystrophy as well. So the orthopedic patient doctors are seeing this syndrome. We know that ischemia is due to cholesterol, it's due to diving, it's due to various things. But we think that this is a, possibly quite an important cause of, of ischemic hip disease. Case number two, syndrome X. This is a woman age 51, two years anginal pain, chest pain on exercise, past history of a DVT, three miscarriages, angiogram showed clear coronaries. And I knew nothing about syndrome X, but this is cardiology syndrome X, which is angina with normal looking coronaries. She was treated with warfarin with improvement in the angina. 
What's this patient teaching us? The cardiovascular doctors are belatedly rec re recognizing the syndrome. And it's quite obvious, really. If you've got sl sludging of the blood, the brain is involved, but so are other organs. And we are now seeing a number of cases. This was an early study where we had nine such cases of um, syndrome X, abnormal uh, angina, but with normal coronary angios. Well, we know the heart can be involved. I mean, some people can get valvular disease, and I think you heard this morning about one such a case. But in extreme cases, they can get Libman Sachs endocarditis, which is thrombotic endocarditis. And funnily enough, other clotting disorders don't do this. So this is a clue if you're really searching for a diagnosis. There is another aspect to it, and this is slightly experimental. We know in lupus that, that it's now called the new diabetes because they get accelerated atheroma in their 50s and 40s. And one possibility is that it's the antiphospholipid group that are more at risk because antibodies to cardiolipin often cross-react with, with oxidized LDL. This young woman was actually jogging in Australia. Young woman, fatal myocardial infarction. She was one of our patients on aspirin, and it did not stop the fatal heart attack. We now know there's a number of recent publications, and I'll quote just two of them. This was a group from Holland. The odds ratio for myocardial infarction in women under 50 on oral contraceptives if they're APL positive, was 22-fold. So really a very striking figure. And a similar study from America, from Greco and colleagues in, in um, Connecticut, they looked at 344 acute coronary patients, women, and they were APL positive in 40%. So I, I, I suspect that the heart world is going to be testing this more. Again, from the most recent World Conference in Rio, this paper by Cabral suggested that myocardial ischemia is, uh, in co is, is more common than we think about it, a common but silent abnormality. So angina, probably still under-recognized, and certainly anticoagulation, if you start treating them for a DVT or for their cerebral features, the angina improves. I mentioned atherosclerosis. There are some studies to suggest that some of these patients do have uh, abnormal arteries. It's early data. They've used intima media thickness and flow-mediated dilatation. But there have been suggestions that they're very early changes. And it's interesting that some of our patients get local focal um, narrowing in arteries. And this uh, Yehuda Schoenfeld, who's a very much a leader in this field from Israel, he wrote a review called The Antiphospholipid Hughes Syndrome, A Crossroads of Autoimmunity and Atherosclerosis. So this is an interesting line of research.